Hey y'all, hi, amazing news. My Lisa Eldridge velvet lipstick arrived in the mail, so I am now filming the video about it. Also kind of amazing. Do you see what I have on my body? A sweater, and I'm wearing it because I was legitimately cold. I was like, my body is cold and I need a layer of warmth, and so I was able to put this on. You all know how I love my knitwear. And I was really, at the rate we were going, worried that I was never going to get to wear my sweaters again. So I'm glad that the temperature is finally dipping in Los Angeles. This is one of my favorite ones. I bought it with my budget last year, as you may remember if you were following me then. It's by Paloma Wool and it's from last winter, so I don't know if this one's still available, but I think that they did release this sweater again, but instead of a face, it has like a, a nudie lady. It has like a line drawing of a nudie lady. So I'll link that one down below. I believe that it just came out. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things, but I don't love overspending. I don't want to overspend in my life. And I also don't want to promote overspending on YouTube. I don't want to normalize it. So this channel is about balance. We love beautiful things, but we want to make sure that the way that that love manifests is controlled. We want it to manifest with moderation. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So I didn't purchase this lipstick for a review. I do sometimes buy things just for the purpose of review. Like I'll buy things that I myself wouldn't buy if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Because I do have a YouTube channel, I'll buy them and then I'll review them. And then I'll either keep them or give them away. But this is different. I actually bought this for myself with my personal beauty budget, which is to say that even if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would have purchased it because I wanted to own it and I decided that it was worth my actual money. But of course, since I do have it, I am filming a whole video about it. However, I'm not going to go through the whole laundry list of questions, which is what I will often do when I buy something for a review or even sometimes if a company sends me something. If I'm doing a single product review, what I'll often do is to make a list of all of the questions that I had about the product before I saw it in person. And then I'll go through and answer those questions one by one as the format of the review. But in this case, my question about this was, was singular. I only had one question about it, which had to do with its color. And that's because this is the second lipstick in this formula that I own. Last year, when Lisa Eldridge released her lipsticks in the fall, I purchased Velvet Fawn. And I actually did do a video about that. I unboxed it on camera. I tried it on for the first time on camera. I talked about the formula. I did some swatch comparisons. So if you'd like to see me going through that process, encountering this lipstick for the first time, the packaging, the color Velvet Fawn, seeing the embossing, applying it for the first time, feeling the formula, reacting to the difference between the expectations and the reality, if you want to see my video about that, then you should watch that initial video because I'm going to try not to repeat too much information. And I do feel like the singular question that I had about this, which is about its color and how it would compare to other products in my collection, I do feel like that's enough. Answering that question is enough to build a whole video. And I will talk about the formula when I apply it for you. It's not like I'm not going to mention it at all. And you'll see close up footage of the bullet and the way that it looks and all of that stuff. It's just that I wanted to mention here at the beginning that I already have a video on my channel about my first encounter with this lipstick and that one's going to be more in depth about the formula and it's also going to be more of like uh, like a first impressions type of thing and I know that that can actually sometimes be valuable if you're thinking about buying something you want to know what the impression is going to be like like what it's going to be like when you open it and see it for the first time but the lipstick itself is old news to me at this point I knew what I was buying in every way other than the color. And of course, it should tell you something about my experience with the formula that I knew what I was buying. I had firsthand experience with it. I already owned one and I went ahead and bought another one. I'm not a completionist over here when it comes to buying makeup. I actually tend to shy away from buying multiples of the same type of thing. And I almost didn't buy this simply because I already own one. I was like, oh, I already have a Lisa Eldridge velvet lipstick. I already have one and it's a great color for me. I don't feel like I really need another one. But the color of this, which is Velvet Dragon, it should be in the title, like I think you already know if you clicked on the video, Velvet Dragon is the one that I bought. The color of this, the way that she described it, it's my perfect red. And I suspected, and I, spoiler alert, kind of turned out to be right, 
I suspected that I didn't really have this perfect red in a good solid bullet lipstick formula. I have it in some semi-sheer or shinier, more emollient, like lip glossy formulas. As you'll see when I show you the swatch comparisons, I have something similar to this, but it didn't have like a rich, rusty, that really sort of vibrant, sensual, not quite red red, or like, mm, you know, dirty red. I didn't really quite have that rusty, dirty red in a real lipstick, let alone a matte lipstick formula. So because I know that it's really my favorite red, because I really trust Lisa Eldridge to formulate colors, and because I knew that I really liked the formula because I already have one, because it's tried and true in a way for me, and because the other one that I have is the opposite of a red, it's like a really neutral nude for me, I felt like this was a good buy and worth my money. And I was also really curious to see how it would swatch out and compare to all of the other reds in my collection. I took some really clear overhead swatch footage, but before we cut to that, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it for you here on camera so that you can see what it looks like. So there it is applied. It goes on really beautiful. It's like a rich, it, it's not super thick in that it's not goopy. Like I feel like when I say thick, thick, it kind of implies it's like something goopy or that you're gonna get a coat that you didn't bargain for, like a coat on your lips that you didn't bargain for. It's definitely not thick in that way. It just feels quite rich. It feels just like a rich matte cream going on. And you know, because it's matte, it's not really nourishing feeling. It's not a super drying matte, like it doesn't feel like my lips are going to just crinkle up underneath it or something, but it's definitely like a pigmented cream. You know what I mean? It feels like, it feels like a little bit of a dusky texture because it has that matte finish. There's no shine to it. So even though there is some emollience in that it is a cream, it does not feel particularly emollient. I find though that it doesn't dry the lips out throughout the day. It's pretty easy to wear and it definitely feels like it sets onto the lips. It's sturdy, but without doing like a full on liquid lipstick dry down. I like a soft lip line, which is why I was smudging around the edges with my fingertips. I really like to use my fingertip to take whatever lip product I am applying and kind of do a blurred overline just on the rim around my lips but without anything kind of harsh there. So on the website, it says that Velvet Dragon is a muted, burnt, soft, rusty red with warm yellow undertones. Inspiration for this shade comes from Cinnabar, a pigment that has been used for ancient lacquering of ornaments and jewelry for thousands of years. So it's that it's that yellow, it's that rusty, warm, soft, yellow undertoned red that I really, really love. There's something like a bit burnt about it, a bit singed. And the fact that it's yellow toned makes it work well with my relatively warm and very, very pale complexion. I just love this kind of red far and away above all of the other reds that she's released. I was tempted to get a red last year when I was first considering buying a Lisa Eldridge lipstick, but none of the reds, I think Velvet Jazz or one of them, no, it was Velvet Morning. So one of them was like a, a bright fiery orangey red and of the ones she had released, that would have been the one that I would have bought if I had bought one. The thing that I really like about Velvet Dragon is that it represents a kind of statement red that I really love, that I've kind of been looking for, that I don't really have in a good solid bullet formula like this. And that was why I went ahead and sprung for it. I feel like it has the potential to become my best red lipstick, like the one red lipstick that I reach for on all the occasions when I want just like a strong matte red. It's my perfect red. So I'm continuing to look at the website. It says the formulation is a creamy hydrating matte with a slight sheen. It's not a flat matte. I would agree with that. And it says the color is long wearing and not drying to the lips. I agree with that almost entirely wholeheartedly. I think that after I have dry skin and I have dry lips. So after I wear this for a while, when I apply it, it definitely doesn't feel like a super flat, like insanely flat, intense matte that's like canceling all reflection. It definitely does have that slight emollience to it. But after I've worn it for a while, I feel like my lips have sort of soaked in what moisture there was to soak in and I feel like it becomes really quite matte. I don't think that the lipstick actively dries out the lips, but I also don't feel like it hydrates them. I think that 
my lips do end up feeling a bit dry over the course of the day when I'm wearing this lipstick, just as they would with any matte bullet lipstick. But I don't feel like it's drying out the lips. And I also don't feel like they look dry. Like after wearing this for a couple of hours, no one's looking at me and being like, wow, her lips are super dried out. They're raisins. It's not like that. I just don't think that it's like this unicorn of extreme hydration where it's like plumping and hydrating your lips and nourishing them even though it looks really matte. I feel like you can't really have your cake and eat it too. In that way, you can't really have both worlds, but what you can do is to walk the very, very fine line between them. And I feel like that is what Lisa Eldridge has done successfully and to great effect with this formula. So before I jump into my final thoughts, because I have had this for a couple of days now, I've been wearing it around, I've, this is like maybe the third or fourth day in a row that I've worn it. Before I jump into kind of like telling you what I think about this purchase for myself, let's look at the beautiful overhead footage. So the first thing that I did when I opened this was to set up my camera in the overhead position and film a bunch of really clear close-up shots of the lipstick when it was untouched. So before I swatched it, I filmed it for you. I filmed the outer packaging. It's all very beautiful, really classy. It's not affected. It's really classy and clean and sleek. I feel like that way about the box that it comes in, the outer packaging, and I also feel that way about the bullet itself, the inner packaging. You know, it has all of these things that make it really luxurious feeling and lovely to use, but it's not overdone at all. It's not overworked in any way. Like the font, the styling, the color, the shape, none of it is overwrought. It's just, you know, elegant and simple and delivering the beautiful makeup. It really suits, I think, Lisa Eldridge's just overall aesthetic and the overall way that she runs her channel. It really fits with her brand. The color is incredible. Looking at the bullet before I had swatched it or anything, I was really excited because it definitely has, you know, it has that murkiness. Like it has something a little bit singed, a little bit tinged about it but it doesn't dull it down at all. It's still really, really like a bright, hmm, how can I say this? I feel like it's both murky and dirty and pure and strong. I feel like the murkiness hasn't made it grungy at all. And I love a grungy thing. So I'm not saying that if it had been made grungy that that would be a problem, but it, it is a true red. It has stayed a true red as they've balanced the color. And yet the way in which those muted tones, those burnt, rusty, and yellow tones have been dialed up in this color lends it a unique quality that also feels really creamy and yummy to me. So when I was looking at the color, looking at the bullet, I just wanted to dive into it. I just wanted to like paint all my walls in it and buy a bunch of bedding in this color. Like it just, there's something really gut, level satisfying about the way that the tones are balanced for me in this particular red. The first thing I, I did was to grab the two lipsticks in my collection that I had offhandedly been kind of the most concerned that it would dupe. So I didn't want it to be too similar to Tom Ford Wild Ginger because this has been my like creme de la creme best, best of the best lipstick, designer lipstick for a long time. And I was kind of thinking that this might come in and take its place. Not that I'm ready to part with Wild Ginger yet. It's just that I haven't been wearing it as much in recent years, partly because it is so slippery and emollient and I knew that this one wouldn't be. I was thinking that this would be kind of like an updated version of this. Not exactly the same color though. So I, I wouldn't have been happy, I think, if they had been exact dupes for each other because even though it would have been different in terms of like the formula and the finish, I feel like I wanted to update my best red, not just in formula, but also in color. So I was hoping that it would be rustier, more muted, more cinnabar-y than Wild Ginger. And indeed it very much is. Like Wild Ginger looks like this sort of watery, bright red next to this. And it looks really, really semi-sheer next to this because the pigment of this is just so rich and intense. The other lipstick that I wanted to swatch next to this one from Lisa Eldridge is really new to my collection. It's the Slim Glow Matte Lipstick from YSL. This was sent to me in PR. It doesn't have the shade name on here, but it's it's touted as like a like a brick nude, almost like a almost like an orange nude or like a burnt orange. So this promised to be really quite orange nude red. And I was a little bit worried that because this also has those yellow under, undertones that they would be rather similar. 
the YSL lipstick is also supposed to be matte. However, it's way, way less matte than the one from Lisa Aldridge. Already, without having compared them, I had talked in a video about the fact that this is way less matte than I thought it was going to be, given that it's called the Slim Glow Matte Lipstick. It's just not a matte lipstick. I don't know why they're calling it that. But when I put it next to this truly matte Lisa Aldridge Velvet, this like rich velvety matte, it really belies the claim of this, that it's a matte lipstick. So neither Tom Ford Wild Ginger nor YSL 214 look matte next to this, and neither one of them is anywhere near the color of Velvet Dragon. I'll show you the swatches, the three of them swatched out together. They are three very, very different lipsticks. So that was great because those were my initial concerns. I was like, is it gonna have anything in common with Wild Ginger or with that YSL lipstick? The answer turned out to be no. It is a creature unto itself. But then I was like, okay, I have to compare it to all of the reds in my collection. I think I was a little bit surprised at how very different it was from those two that I had been thinking of. And that made me wonder if there were other reds in my lip collection that are pretty similar to Velvet Dragon that I just hadn't been thinking of, if I hadn't really been conceiving of it correctly when I was awaiting its arrival. So I went over to my makeup collection and I grabbed all of my red lips. Not even just lipsticks, but red lips. All of the reds of, of every formula. And I brought them over and I swatched them all out on my arm. I'm not going to talk you through every single one of these reds as I roll the overhead swatch footage of them, but hopefully the footage is clear enough that you can see what I'm swatching as I'm doing it. And I also will link every single one of them in the description box below and I'll link them in the order that I swatched them in in the footage. So if there's one of these that really strikes your fancy and you want to know what it is, Check the description box below because you'll be able to see what it is there. The only ones that I'm actually going to talk about in detail are the ones that turned out to really have something in common with Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Dragon color-wise. And those are, really curiously and surprisingly, those are um, M Cosmetics Moroccan Sunset, which was like the first one that I swatched, Glossier's Vanillic Lip in the shade Disco, um, and then strangely, Goldie Red by Gucci, which is the last thing I swatched. And it has, I think, a little bit less in common in every way with Velvet Dragon than these other two. These other two have quite a lot in common, Disco from Glossier and Moroccan Sunset by M Cosmetics. Color-wise, they have quite a lot in common with Velvet Dragon. Um, Goldie Red doesn't have quite as much because it's so sheer and so it really lights up the lips. It really has this kind of lightness to it. But um, it is a little bit of a dirty red. That's something that I'm learning as I compare it to more and more things as like reds come in and I, I swatch it next to them. Um, so it's, it's not as different than I was maybe thinking, if you had asked me, like, are these two super different reds or do they kind of have something in common? I would have thought that they were two super different reds, but it's not as different as I initially thought. So I decided to include it in the more detailed comparison of my red lipsticks that have anything at all in common with Velvet Dragon. So after I had laid out all of the swatches on my arm and I had swiped a long, juicy swatch of Velvet Dragon down my arm, I was able to see, first of all, that red lipstick is infinitely various and so beautiful. I mean, this is just such a fun thing to do. But I was also able to see that there is something about the vibrance of this Velvet lipstick formula that makes it stand apart. I just feel like that's a streak of velvet on my arm. It is really, really different. Even though lots of my red lipsticks are super beautiful, 
it definitely stood out in a way. And I could see at a glance that the three lipsticks that I'm, I pulled to examine more closely, the three that have a little bit of something in common color-wise, are all three very, very different formula-wise in the finish, in the formula. And in this case especially, in the case of a red like this, that really does affect the color. So just after swatching, just those initial swatches, I immediately satisfied myself that this isn't a dupe for anything in my collection. But I decided to do some close-up swatches of the four of them. So um, Goldie Red, which is the Gucci Voile, Disco from Glossier, and Moroccan Sunset from M Cosmetics, along with Velvet Dragon, super close-up so you can see the minute differences in the shades among the four of these. So I'll show you that footage now. And I'll tell you, I was not disappointed in the slightest to find out that Velvet Dragon is relatively close in color to Moroccan Sunset and to Glossier's Disco. And that is because these are like my favorite red color to wear. But because the formulas are so slippy and shiny, I don't tend to reach for them as often because it makes me a little bit nervous. I really especially loved Moroccan Sunset. It's like, since it came into my collection, I've wanted to wear it all the time because I really, really love this soft, burnt, yellowy red, the cinnabar red. But when I've worn it, it's it's a great formula, but it's it's kind of slippy and you can't really overline in the same way. It doesn't really set down. I tend to reach for the vanillic lip more because it is more sheer and so it's easier to wear. But both of these, both of them are emollient, kind of more casual formulas. And because they've got a little bit of sheerness, the color, it's beautiful, it's really lovely, but it doesn't have that like punch you in the face statement. Even though it feels that way because I feel that way about this color, I feel that way about this cinnabar color. So I look at it, I look at it in the tube or I look at it in the little bullet and I'm like, mm, it's that red that I really, really love. But then when I put it on, it's a little bit more muted than that. It doesn't have the power that this one from Lisa Eldridge has. So if you had told me before I purchased this that what I was going to be getting was a velvet lipstick formula version of Moroccan Sunset or of Glossier Disco, I would have been like, bring it on. I would have been even more excited about buying it. So I'm glad that that's what it turned out to be. Hopefully those swatches have been helpful. If you happen to own any of the lipsticks that I have, any of the reds that I have, or dupes for any of the reds that I have, then you can refer to that and you can kind of get a sense of how that will compare to Velvet Dragon. And also you can get a sense of how Velvet Dragon compares to things like Disco and Moroccan Sunset. If this isn't the formula that you prefer, but you want a color like this, you have some alternatives. And of course, I'll link everything in the description box. So final thoughts, since I have had this for some days and I've worn it a couple of days in a row, I can let you know that I find this to be a really wearable red, but not for the reasons that people usually mean when they say that a red is wearable. So I think that Disco, Glossier Disco, is the very definition of like a wearable terracotta red because it has this kind of like muted burnt quality, so it's not so formal in its color. And it also has that really lovely, slippy, sheer, um, you know, not ostentatiously vinyl. I thought that this, when I first started trying the vanilla lips, I thought that they were going to be like ostentatiously vanillic. <laughs> But they're not. They're really easy to wear. It's almost like some kind of chapstick or like slippy gloss. They're much more semi-sheer than I expected them to be. So that lends it increased wearability. And then the mutedness of the color makes it a really wearable red. So it's like a wearable red in every way all across the board. However, because it has that specific kind of wearability that comes from the ease of the formula, it also doesn't have the tenacity of other lipsticks. It's something that you have to reapply a couple of times during the day. And it's really easy to reapply, so it's great. I mean, you know, you guys know that I love these vanillic lips. They're like at the top, the tippy top of the list of things that I've discovered this year that I really, really love. So I'm not trying to besmirch this formula at all. I'm just saying that I think of this as an incredibly wearable red, but I don't put it on at the beginning of the day with the feeling of someone who's like applying her red and gonna be wearing a red lip for the day. I put it on and I'm like, putting it on, blah, 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 blah. It's almost like putting on a tinted lip balm or something. And I'm like, glossy vanilla, I'm like, glossy vanilla lip, shiny, shiny, slippy, slippy, put it on, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, 
off to the races about going about my day doing stuff but I know that as soon as I'm like eating and drinking or if I'm talking for a while on camera or even just going about my business that it's going to wear off it's going to you know wear elegantly into like a really really soft barely barely there kind of tint situation and that if I want a strong red lip look for anything that I'll have to apply it again to me that makes it less wearable in this other way where it's like less it completes the look less. It's it's less of a statement. So it's less wearable as a statement lip. It's less wearable as like that red. But with this, I can. I can get that cinnabar lip, that beautiful, rich, my perfect red. And it sticks and it lasts and it stays really vibrant and bright. And I do think that it's it is a bit more vibrant like it's a tiny bit less of like that rusty color it's got a little bit more of a bright red than either of these two and I like that as well because when a red turns dark like when the rust in a red turns it darker it can it can look really vampy on me it can look really really dark because I'm so incredibly pale I know it's it's hard sometimes to tell on camera but I'm just like I'm white as a sheet of paper over here you guys so for a red to not to to have like a rustiness to have that that burnt tone but to still be bright and light enough that it doesn't look like a vampy color like it doesn't look like a maroon on me that's pretty special. And I feel like this color, the way that the color is balanced, it's a little bit less inclined to turn that vampy direction than either of these two glossy formula products. Another final thought that I have is that I'm glad that I waited. Even though I have known since Lisa Eldridge started making lipsticks that I would like a red in this formula, I'm glad that I didn't buy one of the other reds. I'm glad I didn't buy Velvet Jazz or Velvet, Velvet Morning or Velvet Ribbon just to have a beautiful velvet red because I feel like this velvet formula was really made for reds. Like reds are really its pinnacle. Reds are where it this formula really shines, like really, really lives its best life. The nudes are beautiful as well, so I'm not saying that like those nudes are, aren't are great or that, that the formula doesn't serve them. Of course, it's perfectly fine. I just feel like this formula and red, they're the match made in heaven. Like I feel like she kind of designed it for red. So I wanted a red, but none of them were my perfect red. And I'm really glad that I didn't give in to the temptation to buy one because then when this came out, I would have been like, oh, there it is. She finally made it. But I already have this red from last year and I've only, you know, worn, I've only like used a fifth of it or something. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to bring myself to buy this one. I keep circling around it, but I feel like the last point that I'm trying to make about wearability is that I feel like I'm able to wear this in a way that is more effortless and in that way kind of more casual than some other reds because of the tenacity of its formula. I feel like I can, can kind of just put it on and forget it. So yeah, what a great lipstick. Very, very pleased with my purchase. Reds are so interesting. The undertones in reds are just so interesting. And I really like the idea that, you know, this red looks this way on me, but you know, Velvet Jazz or Velvet Morning might be your color, your perfect red. If you were sitting next to me and wearing a different red, if you have a different complexion, it might look at a glance like we're wearing the same lipstick because we're both wearing this like red that suits us perfectly. But if you put the reds side by side or you like swatch all the reds out together like I did on my arm, you can see how incredibly different they are. That just really gets my heart going pitter patter. I, I love that stuff. I hope I've answered any questions that you might have come to this video with preposition. But isn't it too, too ostentatious to say that I hope I've answered any questions with which you might have come to this video? I hope I've answered any of the questions you might have brought with you to this video. I hope if you had questions about this lipstick, I've answered them. And if I haven't, I hope you'll put them in the description box down below. I'll, I'll check there. I mean, you can't put them in the description box. So we'll put them in the comments and I will check there for them, especially if you have questions about like my other reds, if you question about the undertones, you know, I'm, I'm warm. I'm neutral to warm. I'm very, very pale. I run neutral to warm. Um, and I just feel like not everyone who runs neutral to warm prefers these like rusty things. I feel like it's partly my coloring, but it's also partly just my personality and my tastes. Like I like things that are a little bit touched. That's why this is such a perfect fit for me. That's why it suits me so well. Because I'm so neutral, I can wear blue reds. I just don't prefer them as much. I feel like they look a little bit more classic 
and uh, I I like things to look a little bit fresh and a little bit sort of a uh, little bit sort of surprising, a little bit buzzy. So that's why I tend towards these kind of like rusty, grungy things. Um, I'm going to go now. I feel like I, I said my piece about Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon. And um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Whether you like lipstick or not, whether you're interested in red lipstick or not, whether you're in the market for Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon or not, I hope that you enjoyed spending this time with me. And more than anything, I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself right now so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.